Hey, uh, welcome to issue number two of Ye Old Video Game Magazine. So on the back cover we have an ad for Kickle Cubicle for the NES from Irem. It's a puzzle game and you kick ice cubes at your enemies. So that looks pretty cool. Um, no pun intended. And what the magazine is, considering that we are a little bit past E3 and um, kind of, uh, I guess, still in the midst of what they call a console war nowadays. Uh, this is the 1991 Electronic Gaming Monthly Video Game Buyer's Guide. And as you can see on the cover, we have um, Street Fighter 2010 The Final Fight. This is the NES box art. And I'm assuming that Capcom paid for the cover because, well, why wouldn't they? Anyway, it's yeah, it's not something that I think the editors would just kind of put on the cover for fun uh, because I don't think they gave it the most glowing reviews. Inside here is we got a, a few uh, details on the the new Super Nintendo that had not yet come out. Uh, right here is yet another video game ad for some friggin' Genesis sports crap. Table of contacts and did I say contacts? I meant contents. Here's Sonic Spike for the Turbo Graphics. If you can see that ad there, and um, let's just flip, flip through this real quick. This is a, a editorial from the former editor in chief and founder of Electronic Gaming Monthly, Steve Harris, not the guitarist from Iron Maiden. This is. Uh, the hottest year ever for electronic gaming. You see that? Can you read that? I can't tell because I'm not looking at the viewfinder. Ad for Shadow of the Ninja. And an ad for Ninja Gaiden and Ninja Gaiden 2. Letters to the editor over here complaining about the lack of uh, turbo graphics coverage and uh, Somebody uh, said that the hint books that were coming with um, Fantasy Star 2 were uh, not cool because it was like cheating or something. Um, so they want more coverage of Super Famicom and you're going to get some in here. Here's an ad for Dr. Chaos. I don't think I've ever played that. Uh, here's a Vic Tokai uh, two-page ad for several of their releases for the NES and uh, one for the Game Boy, the Dedalian Opus. Uh, you got Terra Cresta, Clash of Demon Head, All Pro Basketball, Conflict, GoGo 13, Kid Cole, uh, GoGo 13 in the Moffat Conspiracy. Again, you get laid in that game, and it's on top of a moving train. Duke Togo knew how to lay pipe. Add for Dragon Spirit, the best of 1990. Check it out. The best of 1990. Their uh, 1990 game of the year is Strider, and I have to agree that that was just probably the game of the decade for me. Some ad for a Godzilla game for the Game Boy. Here is some of their awards for, uh, uh, let's see, best game of the year is Sega Strider. Game of the Year from Nintendo was Castlevania 3. Game of the Year for the Turbo Graphics is Ninja Spirit. Um, best handheld game of the year is Atari's Blue Lightning. I think they probably could have picked a better game of the year than that, but you know, best graphics in a video game, Strider. Best background background music and um, sound in the video game is Eastbook 1 and 2 for the Turbo Graphics CD and uh, yeah it was above and beyond anything else that was out at the time um, if you were there at the time you know and if you weren't you know it's kind of a thing you had to be there for but holy shit man it was awesome best video game system Sega's Genesis well I I'm going to have to agree with that in in perpetuity. Best video game system of all time. Best new system of the year is the Turbo Express. Most challenging video game of the year is Fantasy Star 2. 
best sports themed game, Super Monaco GP. Best sequel to an existing game is Capcom's Mega Man 3, which was loaded with flicker and bugs, and every game after that had the same problems. Mega Man 2 is where it peaked, it has not picked up since then. Most exciting new game, Bonk's Adventure. Uh, I don't know about that, but oh well. Best RPG video game, East Book 1 and 2. Best peripheral of the year is the Game Genie, which was tied up in a um, legal embroiled battle with Nintendo trying to keep it out of the stores. Uh, here we got an ad for, um, let's see, uh, Toho made some games. Again, uh, there's the Godzilla Monster of Monsters uh, for the uh, NES and some Circus Caper game. Yeah, whoop de doo uh, More, more, more. Uh, worst propaganda of the year, NEC's. Uh, Turbo versus Genesis card. I don't know what that is, and I'm not going to read it out loud. But okay, so best license of the year is Acclaim's The Simpsons, except Acclaim made nothing but terrible games. So I would have to say that Acclaim is just one of the worst companies that ever existed. Worst license, Sega's Buster Douglas Boxing. So uh, yeah. Best movie to video game, Sunsoft's Gremlins 2. Best ending is Ninja Gaiden 2. Worst ending is Revenge of Shinobi. Uh, most promising game companies, Natsume, Sega, Capcom, Konami, and Nintendo. Most lawsuits, Nintendo, because they sue everybody. Worst movie to game, Total Recall. Worst uh, name for a game, it's a tie. Uh, Hayankyo Alien and the Dalian Opus because they figured that uh, nobody would be able to pronounce those and um, especially not kids. Um, worst good, worst name for a good game, Hudson's Adventures of Jackie Chan. Maybe they didn't know who he was. I did. There's an ad for some shitty uh, Grand Prix game and then Archista's Ring on NES. Um, I was locked in a basement with my friend Bill, and the only game that we had to play down there was uh, Arkista's Ring, so I actually hate that fucking game. <coughs> Here's a, a Culture Brain ad, Baseball Simulator 1000, and Magic of Shahrazad. Magic of Shahrazad is a pretty cool um, action RPG, but it does have turn-based battles. Um, you can go through time and you can borrow money from shopkeepers and then if you go into the future you'll end up having like a whole bunch of interest to pay back before you can buy stuff kind of cool um, gossip big column of gossip my friend used to write bullshit in the same style very funny uh, here's Ultima for the um, NES long series that is uh, pretty popular here's a mock-up of the Sega CD and um, if you look closely, because I can't zoom, I'm sorry, I have a shitty camera. Uh, you can see that this is... <clears throat> this is not the actual product, but it is pretty close to what it ended up being. That is a drawing. And down here it says they're going to probably package older games at a lower price. And they showed Fantasy Star four, uh, 3 just for fun. And then it said that... Um, they're going to put uh, Alien Storm on the CD and they show a picture of the arcade gra uh, graphics so uh, you know they might have been jumping the gun on that. Add for Skate or Die 2 Ice Pick is not impressed and neither am I. Super Famicom special look at the Super Famicom here from the CES I think or uh, something else get a look at this, what the system looked like um, I thought it had retractable controllers, but it doesn't. Cartridge. Uh, inside it comes with Super Mario World, as we all know. And then uh, the details about the US release for the uh, Super Famicom. More pages dedicated to Super Mario World. Uh, 
And then here's some other uh, launch releases like Final Fight, uh, Gradius 3 R-Type, uh, no, Super R-Type. It was R-Type 2 here, but it says it was actually Super R-Type, which is not R-Type 2. Um, something called Gladine. I don't know what the hell that is. Super Darius, Super Deformer, um, Pilot Wings, F-Zero, Act Razor, or Act Laser as it is there. Big Run, whatever that is, SimCity, Dynamite Bamboozle, uh, Ultraman, that's a shit game, Hole in One Golf, and Draken. I remember Draken. I watched my friend play it, that was boring. Uh oh, pages just flew out. And we got the NES. And let me just pick up what I dropped here. Put it back in there. Okay, so Master System 2, which uh, had Alex Kidd built into it. And um, they tried to, you know, relaunch the Master System in the U.S. It didn't work. Uh, it still failed here in the U.S. It was a good system, kind of cute. It didn't have the card input, so you couldn't play your card games or your uh, 3D games, which was a shame because the 3D was really, really cool. The Genesis and the early pictures of Sonic the Hedgehog before it was uh, revamped. And here's the Turbo Graphics and some pictures of what was going to eventually come out from the CD Game Boy, the Fat Boy. The new uh, slimmer version of the Atari Lynx, which was very overpriced and had a tiny screen and it was barely portable, by the way. The thing was a monster. This was also a monster, the NEC Turbo Express handheld, which was awesome because you could play all of your existing Hue card games on the go, but it ate batteries. The Japanese only Super Graphics which is a good system, it's really cool, but it only had about four or five games for it. Um, over here we got the Neo Geo, and there's a picture of Cyber Lip, and Ninja Combat, and Magician Lord there. Over here we got the Tur- uh, not the Turbo, we got the Game Gear. And some pictures of stuff for the Game Gear, like uh, Columns, and Wonder Boy, and I think there's Monaco GP. And then they rate all these here, and they gave the high marks to the NES, relatively low marks to the Master System, pretty high marks for the Genesis, straight sevens for the Turbo Graphics, surprisingly low marks for the Game Boy, and um, weird uh, higher marks for the uh, Lynx, which uh, Lynx sucked. Turbo Express got high marks, even though it was really expensive and it ate batteries like you wouldn't believe. Super Graphics got semi uh, decent marks. I don't really, I don't, I don't care about the ratings. I'm just pointing them out. Um, even though it was released only in Japan, had very few games. Uh, then we got the Neo Geo, which they surprisingly gave moderately decent high scores to, except for Ed Semrad gave it a five. And that was based mainly on the prices of the console and the game. And the Game Gear, uh, they gave kind of eh, somewhere in the middle. Moving along, uh, Tricks of the Trade, that was the name of their, um, <coughs> excuse me, that was the name of their uh, cheats. Uh, game Pro had uh, SWAT Pro. And other magazines had things like uh, Easter Egg Hunt, and I don't remember what else. So for Devil's Crush, if you put in David White, you could see the ending. And if you wanted to get an unlimited amount of uh, uh, balls to use, uh, you put in Aha. <laughs> And then here's the Thunder Force 3, get all your power-ups code, you can do this just by smashing the buttons a lot, just like, just kind of rubbing the controller and moving the, the D-pad around. You don't actually have to do the code, it'll eventually bring up all of the, the power-ups. It's uh, not a precise thing. So here's an ad for Super Glove Ball, it goes on for pages, Mega Man 3, East, Balder Dash, more East, and if you notice, they they couldn't help but put an apostrophe there. There is no apostrophe in ease, and despite whatever you hear on other people's channels, it is not pronounced ease, 
like ease your way into this game, it is pronounced east. The S is sharp. It's not uh, like easy, you know? It is pronounced east. The Japanese title of the game is Isu. Uh, sorry about that. And then here's this thing for Dracula's Curse. And this showed up in another magazine. And uh, the actual name of the person, oops, you know, you entered your name in uh, um, Castlevania 3. Well, this is Martin, as in Martin Alessi from this magazine. From Electronic Gaming Monthly and some other magazine printed this, so I, I think they sued them or something like that. Uh, bunch of bunch of stuff, bunch of stuff for the Turbo Graphics, and then there's one for Palamedes. Uh, I think that was unlicensed. Um, here's a game thing where you order games through the mail. Of course, they're expensive. These were these were Mega Drive games. These were imports. So. Um, I actually owned the Japanese import of Shadow Dancer, and um, that's not the title screen for it, by the way. That's, like, I think, probably the arcade or something like that. And I traded my Game Boy for the for Shadow Dancer, and it had a much cooler um, cover, and it had a better full-color uh, instruction manual with lots and lots of artwork in it. And then here's some Nintendo stuff, like there's a review of... Uh, Castlevania 3, an ad for Low G Man. Street Fighter 2010, The Final Fight. Um, this was some other game in Japan, and they just. Capcom had to use the names to try and cash in on Street Fighter 1, which was released in arcades in 1986, and Final Fight as well, so they try and kind of combine the two. This is, In this American version you use Ken, presumably from Street Fighter and Street Fighter 2, and among other Street Fighter releases that have been released since then. And uh, this was a very hard game actually. I, this was about as far as I could get was this Vine stage. Uh, here is Tecmo World Wrestling and uh, a baseball game and Ninja Gaiden 2 and Tecmo Bowl. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, when this was uh, first announced in Nintendo Power, uh, they said that there was going to be no flicker, I'm moving the tripod around, sorry, there was going to be no flicker in that game, and as we all know, if we've played it, there is a shitload of flicker in that game. An ad for Image Fight, this was probably on every single back cover of uh, comic books around that time. Gremlins 2, Battle Chess, Shadow of the Ninja Review, they gave it pretty high scores. Uh, Caveman Games, um, I heard that was kind of a fun game, I've never played it though. Mega Man 3, some newsletter for a video game, that's actually how Electronic Gaming Monthly started out. Uh, it was an, uh, a, a fanzine that was like printed on Xerox paper, and then uh, they made a deal with KB Toys to distribute the magazine there. So uh, if you're a kid in the 80s, you probably saw several early issues of um, Electronic Gaming Monthly, like with uh, Super Contra on the cover, or something that would always be like a huge blown up screenshot from one game. And uh, yeah, and they had those there for a long time. They were all tore up and on clearance and stuff. I, I was with that, that was how I first got my EGMs. And, uh, I started buying them on the newsstand once they made it that far after that. Uh, here's some game FCI hotlines for uh, games you're having trouble with, like Mag Max, which is impossible, and Cycross, which never ends, and Xanak, which is just like you have to be good at it. Genesis Outpost, ESWAT, and then here is the infamous Genesis Advert where it says Genesis does what Nintendo lots of those that was their campaign here's a picture from uh, Vermilion known as Sword of Vermilion in the US and among several other games that were going to be available for the Genesis if they were not or actually no this was all about Sword of Vermilion never mind 
and then here are some more ads for games that were coming out like uh, Spider-Man which took forever it said coming soon but it was not soon it took like over a year and a half for that thing to come out Dick Tracy came out rather quickly and it played like uh, Dynamite Duke so uh, yeah here's um, Fire Shark for the NES Insector X, Felios Reviews can you see that? My arm is in the way. Does it matter? These are good games to have on your Genesis. Um, if, and here's 17 companies who earned the right to display this seal, the official Sega Genesis seal of quality. That was pretty much an ape on Nintendo and their seal of quality. And uh, they allowed Tengen to release games licensed, unlike Nintendo. Because Nintendo was unforgiving, because uh, Tengen used some underhanded tactics to bypass the uh, lockout switch or chip inside the uh, carts. And uh, yeah, here's just a whole bunch of different. Uh, it's an ad telling you that there's a, a bunch of you know third-party publishers creating games for the Genesis, which the uh, Master System lacked. As you can see, there's Kaneko Seismic and Television. Uh, no, not, not in Television. That's a uh, New Vision. And uh, let's see what else is there. Sage's Creations, Electronic Arts, Technosoft, Lasersoft, DreamWorks. No relation to the uh, movie studio. Traco with Atomic Robo Kid and a couple other things. Uh, yeah. Turbo Champ, check this out. It's East Book 1 and 2, and look at that. A perfect 10. Got high marks. If you want to subscribe to Electronic Gaming Monthly, it's only, what is it? This is only 19.95 for a full year in uh, 91 money. Um, That's a pretty good deal. Uh, I think down here you can buy a sword of shit. It's actually a short sword, but we always call it the sword of shit. And then there's a picture from Life Force. Um, Ninja Spirit for the Turbo Graphics. That's a great game. It came with your duo, or you could get Splatterhouse, or um, I can't remember what the other cue card game was, but. There were three different ones. Ninja Spirit was the most common. And uh, there was one other one. I just don't remember what it is. So this place sold pretty much every game. And they had stuff for uh, the uh, Japan uh, video games. And you could order them. And they always claimed that they had the lowest prices, but everybody sold their games for the same price. Legendary Axe 2 review. Pretty cool game. It's uh, not as good as the first one, but it's actually a lot easier and more enjoyable because of that. Uh, this is an ad for the Ultimate Gaming Club. I think they actually traded and, and stuff. And this is an overall uh, bunch of scores that they gave at a glance to uh, several things over the year, I think. And then here's the top scores from everybody that mailed in their screenshots. And here's the ending to uh, Batman for the NES. This was something that was featured in um, Electronic Gaming Monthly at the time. It was a column called Game Over. And they got into a little bit of hot water with their readers because at one point they published the ending to Super Mario World before it was even released in the United, in the United States. And um, over here is... Uh, Mega Play Magazine. You want to subscribe to Mega Play? Start my Mega Play subscription. It's the all Sega Genesis and Master System magazine. Ten dollars for your subscription. I think it was probably quarterly. Uh, I had one issue of it. It had Batman on the cover for the Genesis. It was a good magazine. And uh, it was uh, short-lived. An ad for the uh, Atari Lynx with uh, Gauntlet 3 and California Games, Clax, and some other shit on it. Um, and Blue Lightning. 
which looks like a flight in the mouse. Thought it was something else, but there it is. And then there's the end of the magazine. Now the reason I had pointed out because it's close to E3 and console wars was mainly because of all of these video game consoles that were around at the time. I mean, look at all this. And now we have three major consoles and then two handhelds and arguably one of them is a little bit more popular than the other and uh, that would probably be the Nintendo 3DS even though I, I don't like the DS and I, I haven't liked any Nintendo handhelds since the Game Boy Advance. Um, so yeah, this is the uh, 1991 uh, version of what a console war looked like and what the uh, uh, before E3 there was the CES so you would see a lot of stuff uh, from the CES in these magazines there was no E3 so uh, it was a different time and it was uh, arguably more enjoyable it just depends on your age and this is running longer than I thought but um, I hope you uh, enjoyed looking at this magazine. I'm going to do this as a series uh, every once in a while here. I don't have um, a whole lot of them left. A lot, a lot of my magazines got left in Tucson and I don't know if I'm ever going to see them again. But uh, if you do like this, just uh, leave a comment, hit subscribe, thumb up if you watch it. That'd be great. Really appreciate the uh, new subscriptions that I got. I got a whole two of them. I'm up to 14 now. Two, two subscriptions in a few months. So uh, keep those coming. I really do uh, appreciate it. And um, you know, I'm not like looking to become some kind of a YouTube celebrity or anything. I just want to know that people are actually interested in what I'm doing because it makes me want to do it more and not just kind of like, well, maybe I'll do it. And, you know, so keep them coming, keep the comments coming, I, I, I appreciate it and I, I, I enjoy all of your videos, I do my best to uh, comment on them and if I don't, I do hit the like if I do like it. Um, everybody enjoy your uh, day, your night, your week, your evening, whatever, your morning, uh, your month, and uh, try to keep cool out there, it's getting pretty hot. Um, so I'll, I'll see you guys next time. I might do another uh, collection video here soon. I'm either going to do my PS1 or my Dreamcast. Uh, how about you give me a heads up on what you would prefer to see if I did a collection video. And I'm going to continue this particular magazine series. And I'm going to get into some pretty interesting ones, I think, coming up here soon. I, I don't have a lot, like I said. so. Um, just let me know what you think of the video, and um, y'all, you guys, take care, and I'll see you next time. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, please continue to watch my videos if you are one of the people that watches them. And I, out of the 14 of you, only one of you leaves comments, so I'm, I'm really hoping to get some more comments coming in because it makes me. It gives me, uh, you know, some validation about this, which makes me feel good, you know. So, anyway, I'm out. I'm I'm a stop this now because it's already getting to be like 30 minutes. So, uh, yeah, take care, and everybody enjoy your games and happy hunting. And uh, if that magazine was any use to you, uh, maybe you'll find something cool that you didn't know about. So we'll. Uh, I'll talk to you next time, and y'all take care.